All right, so uh, this is 7.2 in Libra. Uh, we are going to continue on with our exponents here. And what we're doing is we are applying exponent properties involving quotients. So in section one, we talked about uh, applying exponent properties involving pr uh, products, multiplication. Now we're going to, going to do it with division. So some of the same things are going to apply. And I recommend, again, very, very important, try not to memorize these rules as much as understand logically the why they, why they work. So this is what we're going to, let's just get right into it. So here we have a quotient of properties. Again, notice the bases are the same. We talked about that if I write something a to the fifth power, the a is considered the base, the five is considered the exponent. You know, same thing if it was a number, if I have six to the fifth power, six is considered the base, five is considered the exponent. So what this looks is, is we have the same base and we have powers. So a to the fifth divided by a to the third. And if you recall from the last section, that means that we write out five a's across the top and we write out three a's across the bottom. Well, if you know anything about, if I were to write a over a, I hope you understand that that is equal to one, meaning those just simply cancel out and they're just equal to one. Same thing as if we had two divided by two. That's just equal to one, the twos cancel out. So what happens here is, you see we have five A's across the top and three across the bottom. So if we go through and we cancel out as much as we can, we have three A's that we can cancel out. So we're only left with two of them. So we're left with A times A, which is just A squared. But notice this exponent is the same thing you get when you just take five and subtract three. So the property here is that we're subtracting our exponents, uh, not multiplying, not adding or anything like that. It's subtracting. Again, I don't necessarily want you to remember. It's okay if you remember that, that property, don't get me wrong, but I want you to understand why it works. And it's because they're all canceling out. That's the reason why it works. So if you ever get stuck or if you're ever taking a quiz and you forget what the property is, just write it out longhand like this. And if you understand that concept, then that will help jog your memory about which property you're, you're using. So the general property is, is when you're dividing, uh, exponents or when you're dividing two bases there you're going to subtract the exponents so let's just get right into these examples we'll fly through this pretty quick because it's very similar to uh, what we did in 7.1 so we have 9 to the 12 minus 5 and again we could write that completely out we would write 12 nines across the top we would write five nines across the bottom and the five on the bottom would cancel out with five on the top so we'd be left with seven of them so we have 9 to the 7th. Here we have negative 2 to the 4 minus 3. So you end up with negative 2 to the first power, which is just negative 2. Remember, anything to the first power is itself. Okay, here we're making it a little bit more complicated. We first want to do the top, so we're going to combine the top. So the top will be 6 to the 3 plus 4 over 6 to the 2. So we had to add the top because that's just multiplying. That's what we did in 7, 1. So that's 6 to the 7th over 6 squared. So now we can do our subtraction. So we do 6 to the 7 minus 2, which is 6 to the 5th. And I'm not saying you have to show as much work as I am here. I'm just trying to show you the process of how we get through this and how we do it. So here, here's where fractions come to play. And I know that a lot of, a lot of you struggle with fractions and how to multiply them. But remember, if we have r to the 8th and it's not as a fraction, r to the 8th is the same thing as saying r to the 8th over 1. So this r to the 8th is going to be multiplied to the top over here. So when we multiply this to the top, because it's like over 1, it's r to the 8th times 1 is r to the 8th over r to the 5th. So now we can do our subtraction, r to the 8 minus 5. So we get r to the 3. And that's that. OK, let's look at the next property. The next property is what happens when we, and again, this is very similar to what we did in 7.1. It's just now a quotient. So we have an exponent on the outside, and we have stuff on the inside that's a quotient. Well, again, if we were to write this out long way, it would be a over b 
four times, A over B, A over B, A over B, A over B. And if we multiply straight across the top, we have four A's, A to the fourth, and we have four B's, B to the fourth. Well, all that means is that we're doing the same thing we did before. That exponent needs to be applied to everything, top and bottom of a fraction, every term. It doesn't matter if it's multiplied, it doesn't matter if it's divided, it will be applied to every term on the inside of that parentheses. Okay, so a over b to the m will be a to the m over b to the m. So again, let's look at a couple of examples here. Apply that 6 to both, and that should be pretty easy. We get c to the 6th over d to the 6th. Okay, do the second one. Remember, use parentheses when needed. So here it's going to be negative 2 in parentheses to the 3rd over y to the third. And anytime you have something this small, you should just multiply it out. So do negative two uh, times itself three times, and we get negative eight over y to the third. Okay, and then this last one, we have x squared to the second power over four to the second power y to the second power. Again, we have to do 2 to the second power there. x squared squared is the same thing as x to the 2 times 2. So this is going to be equal to x to the fourth on top. And on the bottom, 4 squared is 16. And then we have y squared. Okay. So those are the two properties we're dealing with. We're dealing with the quotient property where we subtract. And we're also dealing with when we have a quotient on the inside of a parentheses and a power on the outside, applying everything to the inside. Now understand, all of this stuff will be combined all into one. So you know we're trying to go step by step on these properties because the properties never change. So we have to be able to combine them all into one into some more complicated problems, and we'll get there. So let's move on to the next page. You guys have checkpoints to do. So go ahead and uh, take a couple minutes to do these four problems. Uh, hit play or hit pause. Hit play when you're ready. Hit pause on the video for now, so that way you have some time to do those on your own. So go ahead and just hit play when you're ready. All right. So this first one, you should have gotten a to the sixth. Eleven minus five is six. Next one, you should have multiplied across the top first. So four plus three is nine to the seventh. Then nine to the seventh divided by two. Seven minus two is nine to the fifth. Next one. Apply the exponent to everything, so we have a to the third on top. We have b squared to the third on the bottom. B, uh, 2 times 3 is 6, so the bottom would be b to the sixth, so we get a to the third over b to the sixth. Uh, fourth one, we have negative 5 squared over y squared. Again, this 2 is applied to both of them. Negative 5 squared is 25 over y squared. Okay, so let's get into a couple of uh, more complicated ones and see if we can uh, do those. So again, all of the properties still apply here. So it's just a little bit more to do. So this 3 is going to have to be applied to everything on the inside, including numbers. So that means that we're going to have 3 to the third power. We're going to have a to the fourth to the third power on top. And on the bottom, we're going to have 5 to the third power, and b to the third power. So now we do each one of these individually. So 3 to the third power is 27. a to the fourth power to the third power, that's where we multiply. So that will be a to the 4 times 3. So that's a to the 12th. 5 to the third power is 125 and b to the third power is already simplified. And that's all we can do. The only time that it might be a little bit different than this is you might want to see if you can simplify this fraction. So you might want to reduce that fraction. This fraction cannot be reduced, so we're good there. But sometimes that can be reduced, and you have to check on that. OK, next one. Now we're multiplying two things. But what we'll do is we'll do these things one at a time, and then we'll multiply at the end. So. Here we have x to the third, so let's just write these out one by one. We have x to the third to the seventh 
over y to the seventh. So again, because it's three and then to the seventh, that will be a multiplication. X to the three times seven equals X to the 21. So that means we have X to the 21st power over Y to the seventh power. And then we have it multiplied by this other one still. So that's gonna be one over three X to the eighth. And now what we're gonna do is because it's fractions, we're just gonna multiply straight across the top. So this will be x to the 21st times one will be just x to the 21st. And then we multiply across on the bottom and we get three x to the eighth, y to the seventh. So again, all we're doing is just combining everything by multiplying it. We're not you know, doing anything with these yet. But now, see, the, the one mistake that I will see here from most students, number one mistake is once they get here is they think they're done but notice we have x's on the top and we have x's on the bottom so we always have to simplify as much as possible so we're not done here yet so what we need to do is we just need to make sure that we only have one of each variable left when we're doing this so this right here still needs to be simplified so that's what we want to make sure we do so x to the 21st over x to the eighth will be x to the 21 minus eight. So therefore our solution is we're left with x to the 13th, but because we had more x's on top than we had on bottom, that x to the 13th will be on the top. So that will be x to the 13th on top, and we will have our three y to the seventh on the bottom. So again, the point was if we were to write out 21 x's across the top and eight x's across the bottom, all eight x's on the bottom would cancel out and we'd be left with 13 on top. That's why we have this answer. All right, so we're gonna skip this example. Uh, we're gonna do some stuff in class, not necessarily dealing with this exact example, but we're gonna do more story problem stuff in class. So the last thing that I need you to do is just try this checkpoint on your own. Um, again, this is, you know, if you can do this, then you're in pretty good shape with exponents or with these first two sections. So try this one on your own and try and simplify it as much as possible. Um, and then go ahead and hit play when you're ready, but give yourself a couple minutes to do this on your own. Uh, hit pause on the video and then just hit play when you're ready to see the solution. Okay, so here's the solution you should have gotten, 8s squared t squared over 27. So let's talk about real briefly how we got that. So we applied the 3 to everything on the inside. So we had 2 to the 3rd, s to the 3rd. We had 3 to the 3rd, t to the 3rd. Then what we did was we combined everything into one fraction. So we just multiplied straight across the top. 2 to the 3rd is 8, s to the 3rd stays, t to the 5th stays. 3 to the 3rd is 27. S stays and then T to the third stays. Notice all I did was rearrange this. You can rearrange it in any order you want just so I lined it up. So now I see I have S to the third over S. Doing that is three minus one, S squared. That's where the S squared comes from. You have T to the fifth, five minus three is two. That's where the T squared comes from. And remember, all the S on the bottom canceled out. The three T's uh, t times t times t canceled out when we did the subtraction. So those are both gone. So the only thing we have left on the bottom is the 27. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Again, uh, if the Edmodo quiz has been assigned, uh, make sure you take that and uh, bring questions tomorrow.